Would you turn your Bible to the book of Colossians, chapter 1? Again, I'd like to say it's good to be back in the house of the Lord and thank Him for the privilege I have to be here and to read His Word. And I know that it's not only going in the ears of those that are here, but out to the world. And uh, I'm so thankful that we have the opportunity to talk to uh, people out uh, wherever they may be and, uh, and uh, that the Word can go out. We uh, are privileged this morning. We want to turn to, the, like I said, to the book of Colossians. We want to start in verse 1. Now, uh, my understanding of this, this book of Colossians is that Paul did not write it, even though probably he, he uh, told them what to write, but he was, uh, best I can find out and read, he was in, in the prison at Rome. But it was written uh, by this uh, Tychius or and Onesimus. And uh, so I'm sure that Paul uh, told them what to write, but uh, as we read this, uh, you can understand that Paul uh, did not put it down in his own writing because of, what, of the way that it, uh, it uh, identifies Paul and as it, uh, as it speaks about Paul and as it speaks to us because uh, there, and, and like I say, it don't... Uh, take away anything because Paul was not able, probably at the time that this was wrote, uh, to be able to write it because, like I say, he was in, in, in prison. But it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy is our brother. So we see here that it's talking about Paul and about Timothy, and these two are writing this, and he says, to the saints, and the faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossus, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a good, that is a good greeting to any any time anybody would uh, say anything to you. Grace be unto you. Amen. Uh, and it's it's a, it would be a very very good for us to try to use it more than we do in greeting our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Grace be unto you. And because, listen, it's a, the grace of God, and that is the most important thing about our Christian life, is the grace of God. And so he says here uh, in verse uh, uh, 3, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying also for you. So here again, he, they're, they're talking to the church and they're telling them their love for them, uh, Paul's love for them, Timothy's love for them, and he's, he's bringing this to, uh, to show them something about Paul's work and about Timothy's work, because in verse four, and notice he says, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. Now, we, we looked at this and we, we see here something since we heard of your faith. Now, again, they didn't see them. They didn't uh, discuss anything with them. But they heard through Paul and through Timothy of the faith of this church was there. And this is something this morning that uh, in our newsletters, uh, like Brother Larry was talking about, uh, our, our missionaries, we hear of them. Amen. And a lot of times it goes in one ear and out the other, but we as God's people need to uh, remember their efforts in sending us messages and that we should pray for them because, listen, they're having a hard time there too. Amen. I mean, there's nothing going on down there and, and the spreading of the gospel and the enlarging of their territory, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a great work and we should uh, consider their, 
messages that they said to us and we should pray for them and we should uh, really and truly uh, love them through praying for them uh, to Jesus Christ Amen. And, and, and encouraging them. So here he says here, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints. Now, in 2 Timothy, we want to read just a few few scriptures here concerning this uh, since we heard. In 2 Timothy 1, I believe it is, 2 Timothy 1, verse 1 through 4. Uh, Paul, in verse 1 of 2 Timothy 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, you know, as I'm reading this and I'm thinking about this, how encouraging, how encouraging it would be for the church to get together and to write a letter to our missionaries Amen. And use some of these scriptures and tell them uh, we're thinking about you. We've not forgot you, even though, you know, we send them uh, a little money every month and all this. And, and I know they appreciate it. But still, all in all, every once in a while, a good sound letter would be very encouraging to them. Amen. And I think it would be pleasing to the Lord because this is how the messages were spread here. So he says here uh, 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 to Timothy in verse 2, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, peace from God the Father, <clears throat> Christ Jesus our Lord, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. And, uh, uh, you know, the more you think about this, wouldn't it be encouraging? Amen. Amen. Wouldn't it be encouraging for another church to write us a letter and say, hey, uh, just a little something to let you know that in our prayer service, we're praying for you and in our homes, we're remembering you and we would like to uh, send you a little greetings and encourage you. Amen. That's, that's, that's the way the world does it. The world gets on the TV and they encourage the world, you know, through the uh, ugliness of the world and uh, the world accepts it as right. an encouragement to do these things. But here again, it just, it's something that we, uh, you know, sometimes we don't encourage the churches like we should. But he says here, uh, I have I have remembrance of thee in my prayer night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears that I have be that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfringed faith that is in thee, which dwelleth first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. And so again, we just we just. We want to re, uh, re say these things, but it would be encouraging. Amen. And, and so uh, we need to think about these things. So he says, uh, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on thy hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and Amen. of love and of the sound mind. Be not there, therefore ashamed of I, the testimony of our Lord, not of me, his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. And you know, those that are downhearted, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm sure Brother Larry gets, tar, uh, gets downhearted sometimes. And you know, an, a little bit of encouragement, if you can't go, a little bit of encouragement to hey. Uh, I'm glad you had a good trip, or I'm, I hope you had a good trip, and I'm thinking about you, I'm praying about for you. These things are encouraging uh, to a brother or to a church or to uh, anybody that is trying to serve the Lord because, I, I, and I, really in our missionaries, you know a lot of times uh, it, uh, if, they're, if they're a true missionary, listen, if they're doing the work of God, 
they're not like some of these false missionaries that are going down there and living it up and having a big time. But these people are out there roughing it and doing without a lot of times and right. trying to encourage others to uh, be saved. And so uh, it should be our, our desire uh, to, to encourage with a, a word, uh, a letter, or something like this. So here back in our lesson in Colossians, I wanted to read that because it says, since we heard of your faith, and of course, like I said, we get these little, these letters from these, uh, from them, and they tell them the things that they do, but he says, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, wherefore ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Now, in 1 Peter uh, 1, 4, we see this here where this hope uh, uh, is, and he speaks of this in 1 Peter. Uh, I want to read you just a, just a little bit of that, if I can get to it without too much problem. 1 Peter 4, read this. I had Mark right. 1 Peter, I'm sorry, turn to chapter verse 1. 1 First, First Peter 1, 4. <clears throat> so he says, to an inheritance, well, I'm going to read, I'm, I'm going to start with verse 1, and that, and that will lead you into it. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius Galus, Cape Cadopia, can't say it, Asia, Capitonia, Asia, and Bithia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Now, in, this, in these verses here, he speaks of the elect according to the foreknowledge of God, which we understand and we know what the foreknowledge of God was because we know that, that God foreknew all things and before the beginning of the world, and we can see that in, uh, I believe it's in Second Timothy, we can see these things, but anyway, uh, I, I'll, 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 I'll give it in Second Timothy 1, 8, I'll read that in a few minutes, about this foreknowledge of God, uh, the, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of blood, and of course, we see the sprinkling of the blood. It was back in the Old Testament where they went in and sprinkled the blood. But there's been a new. There is a new thing that this represents now. It's a. It's a. It's a, an example of Jesus Christ coming to this world and dying and shedding Amen. His blood for our sins. Now we see here. He says uh, the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace. Unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. Amen. Now here we were talking uh, over here back in our lesson, and I'll turn I'm just turning back to, to pull pull this out, but it, it was talking about the joy that uh, that we have, but here it says, unto a lively hope. A lively hope, one that it says here, uh, uh, a, lively, uh, uh, boy, uh, a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so this lively hope does not ever come to an end. Now the, the hope, the sprinkling of the blood that was in the, uh, 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 Old Testament, listen, there was an end to the sprinkling of the blood. Right. Because the, the priest, and we, we were studying it, uh, some in Adam's class in the afternoon, but the sprinkling of the blood was a thing that was to not do away with it, not forgive it, but it was to roll it back uh, until this lively hope come into power. And the dying of Jesus Christ on the cross. So this lively hope is just an example of the. I mean, the the the, the lively hope is 
is the real thing for that Jesus Christ came uh, to this world for that he died for our sins and for that he put the blood on the mercy seat Amen. and God accepted that as the offering for a sin atonement. So we see here, he says, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, Amen. reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last times. And this is this is an encouragement to us this morning, because when the devil comes around to us and says, "Hey, uh, you're not saved. You're just playing a game." Listen, read this to the read this to your ungodly flesh. Let it soak in and tell this flesh that you have here, listen, this is, this is the truth. Because over in 2 Timothy, I, I, would, I would, if you would just uh, turn over there in just a minute, I want to read you something else. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 8, there it is, 2 Timothy 1, 8. I'll get you right in a minute. 2 Timothy 1, 8. Notice. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, Amen. nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. He had a purpose this morning. If you are saved if the Lord God of heaven has called you, he has a purpose for you. Amen. And he says here, according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus, when? Before the world began. Right. And so, uh, and it's been mentioned in times past here in sermons about the hard shells and uh Hard shell Baptist, if you would, that believe they use this and say, well, there's no need of going out and of testifying to people because God has already called them. But they 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 do not look back and say, go into all the world and right. preach the gospel. Now, we know this morning that God knows who He has called. Right. And He or He has chosen. And he will call those that he has chosen. But here's the, 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 the wonderful thing in, in, in a way. We don't know. That's it. We don't even know about ourselves until he calls us. Amen. Because he has chosen us before the world began. And so we're, cho we're a chosen people. Uh, a joyful thing. Uh, uh, the blessed hope. Because listen... If God, if God has chosen you before the world began, and He calls you, He calls you unto Himself, you're His, and you have a special purpose, and there's nothing this morning that can rob you of that calling. Amen. Regardless of what it might be, there's nothing that the devil can do, because let me, let me say this to you this morning, that God also called the devil. He created the devil. He placed him there and he had a purpose for him. And that was to fulfill his plan that he had for salvation. Right. For those that are saved. And so he says here, but in verse 10 of, of, of 2 Timothy 1, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. And this is this is the talking about the calling or the purpose, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death. And abolished means done away with. He overcame this death Amen. through his death, burial, and resurrection. And he says, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So here is the light. This Bible of books or this book of books is the light 
of mortality. It is the, it is the light, the gospel, the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and God himself. And so when we read something here and we understand it thoroughly, uh, the devil should not be able to shake our, our, our thoughts about this thing because it is his job, it was his purpose for him to create doubts in our mind. Mm -hmm. But through Jesus Christ, we understand that this is not true what he does for us. And don't, don't never, don't never uh, set him short because he can always use things that you don't know about. Right. And so here again, he says, where unto I am appointed a preacher an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. And so here again, uh, we we need to we need to uh, think upon these things that he has he has done for us. And back in our lesson now in verse uh, five, <clears throat> notice for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Now the hope that he's talking about is whereof ye heard before the word before the word of the truth of whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. You have heard in the gospel time and time and time again preach of this hope. And the world wants to weaken this word hope by a hope so like oh i don't know but i hope so but that's not right this, this hope that he's talking about here is a no soul salvation it is one that you can depend upon just like this morning uh you walk on this floor knowing that this floor is going to hold you up you study your bible you serve God because that hope is real within your spirit, not within your flesh, because your flesh is a doubtful thing that causes this hope to lose its meaning and to lose its power. Right. Your, your flesh, your flesh, your flesh is a constant warfare with your spirit. And so it will, it will, it will do away with these things. But this word here this morning is just like a refreshing drink of cold water when you're thirsty you open this and you pray and you ask god to give you leadership through the holy spirit and you start reading well what you start reading may not be what you need but you continue and you look at something and and all all of a sudden your mind runs, what does this mean? And the first thing you know, well, what was that reference? And the first thing you know, you're in there and you're, you're starting to, you're starting to drink that water. Amen. You're starting to feed, you're starting to, and this, this in, it encourages your heart and this hope comes more alive in you. And this is, this is the greatest, this is the greatest book that you can read. It's the, it's, it's the most encouraging thing that you can do this morning, and so uh, these are these are some of the things that that I wanted to under, I wanted you to understand, and 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 of course uh, there's more more in this than just what I've said, but maybe what I have read I know what I have read is true. I try to read it slow, and I try to pronounce every word that I can right where that it will find a lodging place, where that it will do good. And so I thank you this morning for letting me read God's word to you. And I hope that uh, it will be a blessing to you in days to come. You that are out there in the world listening, I ask you to uh, think upon these things. And uh, uh, if you're lost, Pray to the Lord that you might be saved. Amen. That's our that's our that's our reason for being here this morning is to get ready to leave, and we want to be ready and packed when our ride comes. Amen.
because one day you'll hear uh, you'll hear that last song sung, you'll hear that last word sung, you'll hear the last of things on this earth, and you will your spirit will leave this body. This old body uh, can't hold it no longer. When the Lord calls it out, it's going to leave this body. And it's going to be free if it's saved. And the body will go to rest in the ground. And you'll be free to be with the Lord. Then later on, your flesh will be uh, uh, resurrected. It'll be a glorious resurrection. It'll be made pure. And this flesh and this spirit will come back together. And you'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ forevermore. If you're if you've been saved. And if not, we're gonna be some Thank you for your